Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about when somebody's trying to smash you by doing the leg lace when you have the half guard. This was the number three problem that lots of people were having when I sent out a poll to tens of thousands of grapplers all over the world. And since it's the number three problem out of tens of thousands of grapplers, it's highly recommended that everybody who plays half guard understands how to deal with these situations and has some solutions to um, this particular problem. So usually this tends to happen when you're playing like a knee shield, right? Whether I'm playing like a high knee shield, low knee shield, and the person starts lacing on you here. So he starts lacing on me and they try to try to get low and, and crush you in some way, shape or form. And they almost create this like folding position on you here. So I'm here like this, right? So there's different things that we can do to deal with this particular scenario. So the first thing here is like, let's say go, but let's say we go up here. Once you start feeling the person starting to lace on you, okay? Um, you can still keep playing here. If we start working good frames, then it should make it hard for them to smash you down. What I mean by good frames is we're framing across the, uh, the neckline here, and we're also framing across the arm. We're not low on the wrist, we're kind of like on the forearm slash elbow area here. Because now when he goes to drop his weight down on me, it's gonna become much harder for him to do this, all right? So good frames in general are gonna help you out. However, not everybody has good frames, and not everybody does this um, well enough here. So then what happens is, he starts basically driving down really hard on me and gets positioned. Now, I don't want him to control my near side arm. This is extremely important, all right? I do not want him to control my near side arm. I also don't want him to control my lapels if we're playing with the Gion. Because if he pulls me in like this, he starts controlling my lapels, he's actually controlling my posture, and he can start working his passes on me. So I don't want him to control my lapels either. If the person does control your lapels, we actually have to break those off, okay? So one of the first things that I like to do when he's he's pressuring down and creating, and I like to block my lapels here, and I like to block my far side arm here, okay? I don't want him to get control of this, so I'm kind of posturing back like this. So he's putting this pressure down, I'm posturing back. At this point, when I'm here, I like to put my hand on the top of his head. I create almost like a wrestling style scenario. Once I'm here, I'll come up and I'll get up onto my elbow. So I'm pushing on the top of his head. At this point, he, he's gonna have a hard time even using this. You're gonna have some people who just back out of this and then like you got out and then you make sure they don't get a strong position on you again. Or you're gonna have some people who actually can't back out of this because you have very good head control and they'll start coming to my knees, coming up and I'll start attacking him there. Or I might just pull guard again from there. So that is one of the top things that I like to do is I actually like to get head control, keep, keep him from controlling my upper body almost like turn down and create like a wrestling style scenario. So we're here, right? I'm back like this. Don't let him control. He's really trying to like um, control me. Here, go ahead, grab my, uh, even when I'm back like this, he's grabbing my collar, it's harder because I'm way back here. I push his head down here. At this point, it's gonna be hard for him to do things. Even if he went to go jump over to the other side, here, I still have like good loose control and that I can get out. Just don't let go of that head control. That head control is very important. You can stuff the head down to the mat. Um, another option that you have is we're here like this, right? And he's lacing here. I can come through and I can get like, almost like, um, like an overhook on him. Now once again, don't let him control the sleeve. If he controls the sleeve, he's gonna pull you in. Pull him and break you down and then start smashing you, okay? So let's go back. So we're here like this, I gotta come back here, like this, when he goes to grab the sleeve, keep it away from them. So I'm, I'm getting like a, like, a, like a tricep grip on him. As much of an overhook that I could possibly get on him. Now at this, uh, in this scenario, he's still gonna be trying to grab my lapels and grab my arms here. I keep wrenching. And same thing, I use that to wrench him and get my legs out. It's very underrated in regards to escaping a position. Right, so I'm not trying to get certain moves on him. I'm trying to escape the position so I can maybe go back to it or do something else, right? So if he's presenting a lot of problems to me, I might just do something else completely. We go to the scenario again, here where he has me. <clears throat> here, I don't let him control my arm and I don't let him get super deep on my lapels. If he grabs my lapel here and I'm way back like this, it's gonna be harder for him to deal with, right? But if I'm really close, he's gonna be able to suck me in. So what I do is I come back here. I'm way back in this hand, grabs his tricep into the armpit here, like this. 
Now from here, I start turning down and I start pulling my legs out and then I'll get to whatever I want to do. Whether I want to play guard, or I want to force him to the bottom. It doesn't really matter at that point. Um, and then a third scenario that you could possibly do, this is before they really get down low on you, is we can start inverting. So <clears throat> when I'm here like this, right, make sure he doesn't control the lapels. That's, that's really like a really big thing. I come through here like this and I pull my leg out. Once I pull my leg out, I'll invert so I can recover. Many times you're going to be able to hit omoplatas from there. You're going to be able to hit triangle chokes. Um, I actually submitted one of my opponents in the brown belt world using this position. I rolled through and I, I basically swung over to a triangle choke and got a finish from there. Um, so if we're here like this, and this is with the gi on, we're here. Don't let them control the lapels. Do not let them control the lapels. He's, don't let them control your upper body, honestly. And also frame your hips. If he's going to be trying to come up here, frame those hips here to so try to crush down on me. Look, I'm here. I'm framing. I'm still blocking his arm. Here. If I want to do the roll through, I pull my leg out and invert. And then I could roll. And now here, I might be able to hit a triangle, switch to an arm lock, omoplatas, or other things from there. <clears throat> so those are different ways of dealing with the person crushing you down. There's other ways that you can use, but for me, this is what I like to do. I like to shove the person's head down, or I like to um, torque them down, torque their shoulder down, and pretty much escape the position altogether. Or sometimes I'll invert and I'll try to get these particular attacks on them. That's just my style of playing. That was kind of like a, a little bit of a bonus. So uh, if you have any questions, send me an email or post below um, and I'll do the best I can to help you out. All right, peace.